Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. We are now gorgeous girlies. <laughs> Greetings from Rome. I know I can't believe you're in Sunnyside, Rome, and I'm in actually quite dry, Kerry. I'll be honest, no rain today, so we have a lot to be grateful for. It's a bank holiday weekend. Thank you, St. Bridget. Oh my God, it is a bank holiday at home. Thank yeah. you, St. Bridget. We love you. <laughs> Bridget the Queen. Um, Yeah, so it's a banker back here Um, and the Six Nations are starting. Very exciting weekend ahead. My brother's coming home with Abby, which is great. I haven't seen her since Christmas time Um, for like a few hours when I was visiting London. Um, so I'm absolutely delighted. It's going to be a lovely weekend. You're in for such a gorgeous, wholesome family but also maybe not wholesome weekend. Yeah, no, it'll be like really, really wholesome. I'm just so tired. And I actually kind of wish it wasn't a bank holiday weekend because I have so much work I need to get done and there's not enough hours in the day for all the work I have to do. So um, yeah, look, one of those days, maybe I'll work the bank holiday Monday. Uh, sometimes I work them if I'd rather just not be stressed. Um, So Monday mightn't be bank holiday for me, but we will see. We shall see. Yeah, I was literally, I was outside and I was doing the, my makeup and I was getting ready for this podcast. Mm. And the person that I live with was on their laptop, like doing intense work. And I was like, I'm so like girly pop, like just doing my podcast. I ready. know. It's so funny. I feel like, I feel like when I'm talking about work and I'm like, because like today, guys, I had to be so strict on the time. I was like, I have a deadline at 3 p.m. Like we need to get this done really like quickly. And she was like, yeah, two minutes. 10 minutes I'll be ready there in a second and I was like girl <laughs> I feel like if you don't work in one of those environments then you don't really see the urgent need when people are like get this done <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah so I brought you into my room this is it looks it looks it better. looks Italian I need to make it look <laughs> it's good do you know what it's giving I love this part this is yeah cute. that is so cute and my door love that my part as well. you look stunning are you going out tonight <laughs> Um, I think we're meeting, remember I told you about Luca? Oh, Luca, yeah, that'd be so nice. Yeah, so I think we're meeting him later, but I just want to do my makeup because I was like, after I get this podcast on, I want to just walk around know, Rome. Store. Oh my God, I can't believe you. Walk around oh. Rome, take myself for lunch. <laughs> oh my apartment God, man, oh my God, actually apartment man has been like, so he knows I got to Rome obviously now. Yeah, you were telling like... me that, sorry, we keeping all this in the podcast. This is podcasting yeah, time, so if you don't want this to be in it, oh, it's gonna be like yeah. this. No, 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 this can be in it. Okay, um, apartment man. Yeah, guys, no, this is a new player in a, in the whole thing. Sorry, guys, we've started off this podcast so chaotically as well. We're so sorry. Wouldn't be like us. We're getting used to this whole new layout. Talk to me about apartment man. Are you gonna Are you gonna go on a date with him, or what are the vibes? Yeah, well, I text him saying I got to Rome, but yeah. like he's never been a double texter. He's never been a like. Yeah, you know, and so I let him know, and he, then he texts me being like, "How are you feeling? First day in Rome, like with the sun, whatever." That's I didn't so respond. nice. I think so yesterday I was doing like, and he texts me being like, "Let me know when you want to go on a date or if you need any help." And I obviously didn't reply. Yeah, well, not obviously. I just wasn't replying to really anyone. And then yeah. he responded to my story, being like, "I can't wait to see you. Aww. Let me know how it's all going." And then this morning, I need to text him back because he was like, "Have you not texted him back at all with mad. all these nice messages?" No, because I haven't been on my phone too much. Yeah. Just been living in the moment, you know? Yeah, I completely get that, girly. Um, that's cute, though. I'm so excited for you. I'm so happy for you. Viva la, viva yeah, la Rome. Rome. I've just sent you a Snapchat viva of how you're kitchen, just so you can see from my perspective. Um, but what was I going to say? My phone is, like, on dry at the moment. Like, there's no boys that are, like, like bar obviously one but like it's just so on dry there's no <laughs> I was rotation about to say, I was like there's not none it's just <laughs> I know but it's a, like on dry I feel basketball like basketball team roster yeah but that's what I'm used to do you know what I mean but I feel like for there for like I think since for a while Rebecca I haven't had a roster in ages like no we kind of did a flip I swear to god me yeah. and you flip flop you're we do we do other. flip-flop facts <laughs> like someone will be driving me crazy and he was like no I'm actually I'm in my I'm like he's so nice whatever and then you'll be something yeah like and I'll be good I'll be Gucci 
I don't know what it is about me, but I find that like whenever I get into a situation like with a man on this side of the year, it's always way more intense for me than it is at the end of the year, if that makes sense. I don't know, is it because like I'm born in Mar- like girls, this is so going down the astrology like rabbit hole. I don't know if I was- because I'm in Aries and also Rebecca says that my my Venus is in Taurus. So they're both on this side of the year. So I find that when I start talking to someone like on this side of the year that I get so much more like involved or interested or like like tunnel vision on, on this person than say for example if it's like I don't know like August onwards I won't really take them seriously if that makes sense mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so like and like all my oh, relationships have always started on this side of the year like it's so crazy like all of them yeah I'm the, I'm the exact same I think depending on your birth chart and depending where Venus is in the sky and what house it's moving in towards I don't want to go too in depth but yeah there are better times or like because the fifth house is dating okay the fifth house is dating or like pregnancy or stuff (laughs) like that (laughs) no but our children is what it kind of um (laughs) yeah side note um but so that's Venus so it's in the Mm. fifth house and then so your fifth house is that and then your sixth house is obviously like long term or your seventh house is partnerships. So mm-hmm. when Venus is in that fifth, like fifth to seventh house place in your chart, it's yeah. going to be more likely that you meet someone of substance or like mm. that you have a real connection with. Yeah. Um. Whereas if it's somewhere that's like if it's in your first house, it's all about you. It's not about like finding other people. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. but you're more like attractive so yeah I think it's very interesting I'll be very intrigued like say if you meet someone and they end up being your boyfriend and then I want to like look at like around when he started talking and like see what was going on in your chart like that I love that shit I love like whenever I start talking to someone it was so funny girls I need to fill you in on this because I feel like this is really funny so we will we give him will we call him what we call him I feel like that's very distinguishable your guy yeah I don't know do, do we have people deep diving to see who these men are do you think? I feel like we would okay let's cut okay. all that bit out what would we call him what would we call him before I tell the story Wait, okay I want to come up with a nickname because you always nickname mine yeah oh, well you nickname I'm gonna call him. this yeah, guy okay. yeah I'm gonna call this guy Mr. Woods Mr. Woods is such a good Mr. nickname Woods. <laughs> <laughs> you've really 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 outdone yourself with this one Rebecca I have to say I'm so impressed with it Mr. Okay, so Woods. Mr. Woods, um, Mr. Woods. <laughs> when I first started talking to him, I was like, "Oh, like, oh, this guy's actually really interesting." And Rebecca was kind of like, "Okay," because I really like been not like in my talking to men stage for a while, and I was like, "Yeah, like he's really, really nice," and like, you know, whatever. And um, we were talking anyway, yada yada. And I was telling her about him and she was like, okay, I need to know his birthday. Like she does with fucking every guy that I talk to. She's like, I just need to know what day he was born and what year he was born. And if you have the and time available the time to you. you can get it. <laughs> and if you can get the time, brilliant. And I was like, Rebecca, I've literally just started talking to this guy. Like I, I cannot ask him that. Um, And she was like, okay, we have the date. And then she was like, I was actually sending her on screenshots. I always have to say, like, if I'm talking to a guy and Rebecca asks for their birthday, that, like, Rebecca has asked for their birthday because she's an astrology girly. It's such a good in, though. It's such a good, like... It is, it is for sure. So I I had asked Because you're like, I'm not being psychotic, my friend is. (laughs) Honestly, but the reality of it is, it actually is you. So it's, like, really, really good for me. Um, So I was like yeah look she's looking for your birthday whatever da 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 and he was like guess what sign I am and she said I think he's either a Taurus or something else and she's like I think he's a Taurus though and he was a Taurus so Rebecca was just like hmm with that pretty much straight away and he he was like (laughs) she was like he was like oh can she guess my birthday or whatever and she said I'm thinking like between the 22nd and the 28th of April was it you said something so specific and he started getting a bit weirded out then so no I was like I'm thinking maybe he's an April Taurus and then I I was I thought this date in my head but I didn't like say it to you and then he came back to you and he was like well it's between the 22nd and the 28th yeah and the 22nd of April is obviously my birthday yes and the 28th is 
someone else I know's birthday. Yeah. So I was just, I was like, no way he gave those dates because I was like the second he said Taurus, my brain said 27th. Yeah. So she then she said, is he said, can she guess? And then I said, Rebecca said, is it the 27th? And he was like, yes, what the fuck? Rebecca's a fucking weirdo. And I swear to God, we died laughing at that. We were like, that is so funny that she was able to guess. Like he's like specifically like the his literal born. date. But um, I don't even think it was a guess. I had like an intuitive download. Like something told me that it was the 27th. Oh my so god, I have such a funny story to do with that. Will you actually remind me after this story? Because I have such a funny story to update you on. But um, yes, okay. oh, we found out then anyway. But yeah, I'm just talking away to him. But I just, I feel like I'm so new to this again because I feel like before I would have like had a roster and been like entertaining that. But like at the moment I'm not, and I haven't been talking to boy in a long while. So I feel like so out of the game. I feel like I need to learn again. Like it's like you know the way it's like coaches don't play the game. But now I'm like the coach's back has been redrafted into the game. And also the way you were playing the game before was with a roster. Mm. Whereas now you're playing the game with a different strategy, mm. you know, mm. like so you're true. approaching the game in, in a new, a whole new way that maybe yeah. you haven't approached the game in a while. I haven't approached the game in so a while. So you have to kind so... of rewrite the rules of the game. <laughs> yeah. He's so funny though. He said something to me like, he was like 90% of the time, like you're a sweet angel. And he goes, but that other 10%, like loads of question marks and like explanation marks. And I was just like, uh, <laughs> sorry. Like um, uh, he's the yeah. guy that we were talking about them. And I was like, I was talking to someone and he like pulled up the podcast episode and was like, oh, look at what we have here. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Cause we t- the scream we- she scrumped. <laughs> the screen that I scrumped because the shit that we talk about in this podcast is so violent. <laughs> but see, sometimes um, it's like, you know, story times allegedly, and then other times it's how we're really feeling. Or sometimes yeah. we feel away in the moment when we're recording, but those emotions change. Oh, girl, so it's like, like next week I could absolutely hate this man. So, like, you could by the time this comes out, I could be feeling yes. differently. Like, <laughs> You never know. Like you could be like, I know I said some nice things, but they don't apply anymore. <laughs> they don't apply anymore. But um, yeah, let's not um, let's not predict that with the podcast because I feel like we always do that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> We're yeah. No, but, I um, like the vibes. Honestly, I was actually yeah. talking to um one of the girls last night who's dating the, or kind of dating this new guy, and I said I was like, you know what, I'm getting really good vibes from this guy, and she was like, Rebecca. You've never said that about anyone I've been talking to recently. She That's was like, a good this sign is a big deal. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, well, those other men were yeah. trash. And how did they so. work out? <laughs> <laughs> and where are we now? And where are we now? Are you going to go on a date with apartment man? I feel like you need to do for the plot for the podcast. Like we, like you're in. Rome. I know I need, I need to, um, I have do you apartment have a man. There was someone else. That I was oh no he's not he's not in the country so <laughs> shocking um oh, I need man. to I actually think I uh, dreamt of Dan Humphrey last night and I don't even know what he looks like but Dan Humphrey had come into my dream through you and I was like no I it was like you were coming to me talking to me about him and I was like enough woman I was like enough <laughs> Yeah, no, let's not give Dan Humphrey any more airtime, to be yeah. honest. Um, I know. But... Actually, also, I had an epiphany as well. Um, you can cut this well, bit out if you want to. Um, we talked okay. about Dan Humphrey in the last episode. I think he listens to the podcast. Do you think he does? Yeah, Why? I'm. this is the second time I've said that uh, he's something, like he said something to you before, and now this is the second time he popped back in after we released that episode. So all I'm saying is, all roads lead to the fact that he listens to the podcast. I don't know. Does he listen to the podcast? Mm, I think he does. Because if he does, why would he text me after I said about blocking him? Because he would have spotted that you blocked him. He'd be like, oh my God, I wonder, is that me? And then like, once he realized that you blocked him, he would have tried to text you like everything was normal. Like he had noticed. At four in the morning, whenever he, so. I know, I know, crazy. But um, in terms of that intuitive download that you said, um, about the thing a few seconds ago I was watching a violin last night and it's after getting so good Rebecca oh I my. saw the clip I saw the clip of uh Georgia 
Yeah, see, now, do you know what? I love spiritual girlies and I love everyone that loves their thing and they meditate and I love Georgia Harrison. I really and well and truly, truly do. Like, I think that she has been a fantastic advocate for women's rights. I think she was amazing when she, like, went out on an what is it, unanimously? What well, anyway, anyway, she waived her right to anonymity when she spoke out about the revenge porn case with Stephen Bear, fucking weirdo. Mm-hmm. But I actually admire her and her work so much because I think that she would have helped so many other women and victims come forward and say that this also happened to me. Do you know what I mean? So I love her. Not yeah. discrediting all of good work she's done. But it I'm is so excited for you to talk your shit. It is fucking delusional, like genuinely delusional for you to go away on a meditative like trip somewhere. First of all, complain that you would get a 14 hour flight back in economy. Most people do. Okay, number one. And number two is she literally said to Casey because they were like seeing each other at the time. She they said, you're not allowed to ring or talk to anybody during the spiritual retreat. She got Mm -hmm. access to her phone or her phone, rang Casey and said, I I saw or I was speaking to your dead granddad and he's around you and he said he loves and he misses you. That would make any man run for the hills. Girlies, even if you dream that shit, do not tell a man that. I, like, what are you doing? Like, like that's crazy. See, I, I get where you're coming from, but also if you're so, like, if you're someone who's highly intuitive, like, obviously, I, if you're someone who's highly intuitive mm. and like with meditation and stuff, you can like get, intuitive messages or downloads like the 27th thing but you just like you but wouldn't do you not say think that, that it's just... weird to bring up somebody's dead relative when you're like you're, you like you, they were obviously only just seeing each other for a few months they weren't really fully in a long-term relationship to tell somebody that they spoke to their dead grandparents I think is a bit inappropriate like and I also think I it's don't very think she insensitive said she to... spoke to him though she said I, I felt his energy but from what we you can know? see from Casey, it's he's like she's obviously not going to go into the details on the thing. But like the fact but that also like, the, see, he's not receptive anyway. So you know, it's no, like but it's like, like, I, like I don't think that anyone ever has the right to tell somebody that they've spoken to their someone else's dead loved one. Like if it was yeah, my granddad, fair enough. If she said, "Oh, I feel like I spoke to my my dead granddad," I feel like that's fair. Yes. But to, to speak on other people's like deceased, and I feel members, like. Yeah, that's a lot of like, because I've been to like energy healers and stuff mm. like that and like psychics, but you're paying for the session and they ask you're you like, is it. it okay? Yeah, but also yeah. they ask you permission, like, is it okay if I channel yeah, some energies right now? Like you kind of have to be very responsible, but obviously maybe she's only like, maybe she is highly intuitive and maybe she did, mm-hmm. you know, feel his granddad, but that's you have a duty of care because that can freak people like that's yeah that's a very invasive thing to tell someone if they're not asking for it so I completely I I think that it's really irresponsible and I think I think sometimes when people like like you know if if they're highly intuitive or feel there and they feel that they have these messages I feel like not every message needs to be given right and I genuinely feel like sometimes people speak to make themselves feel better and not make other people feel better and I think in that moment she didn't consider his feelings so I thought that that was like really really inappropriate yeah and she Um, also like I suppose if she said it to someone say if I had a friend who was mm. also like really, really intuitive and also really into like everything I'm into. Mm. And then if I was like, oh my God, I was meditating and like, yeah, I, I think dead granddad maybe is a, a bit fair. Mm. Um, but like, you know, maybe that would be a time you could say it. But yeah, I feel like if if you are like blessed or whatever to be more intuitive or mm. if you're more in tune with it, you have to be really like, I would never say that to anyone, even if I, yeah. you know, like the birthday thing. I feel like even if you did see them, like, like talking about the- I even feel like it, even in, in, in the wildest world, if that was the case and that actually happened, I genuinely don't think that yeah. it's your place to ever say that to anyone. Like, Unless they're like paying or they ask you. Yeah. If they're like, oh, can you, like, is there anything you feel or anything you, yeah. whereas like the birthday thing is so different because it's like, yeah. we're talking about a second birthday and also it's like conversation. Yeah, it's like whereas, a birthday date. Yeah, no, like, I, I did see the clip and I, I was... I was, I was like... howling laughing <laughs> it was so funny like um but I also think and you know what I was... like, that's Matt like that because she it's... was like she wasn't getting it she was like other guys have meditated with me and he was like yeah but meditating is very different to like you know yeah yeah she thought that that was um she thought that that was like 
she thought that that was like an okay thing but no it's it's crazy like but um yeah I I love Georgia Harrison but I don't think that she should have gone on to Love Island because I don't think that it's like I don't think that like she seems to be getting quite upset inside there and I just don't think that like it's fair plus also I think they're feeding them more drink like massively no way. yeah there's theory. massive fights breaking out and stuff and everybody's saying online they think they're giving them more drink just for the drama because this season was so boring until last night um there was oh, like a yeah massive... so they might be like here give them a little bit more alcohol let's spice it up yeah for sure um but i don't know the season is given what alcohol. it was supposed to give for sure i don't think it was given like i didn't even have an interest in watching it like i have been a love island girly in the past i've been subjected to getting absolutely unhealthily obsessed with watching it every single night but this i didn't even i didn't even try to watch it i didn't even watch one yeah. episode yeah I've i seen feel the like clips, but also i think if george is like that spiritual energy girly like love island is like not completely the not the place mm, i agree the vibrational match it just wouldn't be a vibrational match do you know what i mean yeah it's, it's just not popping sis it is just not popping it's, just, it's not the place she's gonna you know oh my god I don't maybe know she went on for like barking, career barking. reasons sorry my dogs what? are going fucking insane can you hear them i can't hear it no see i okay. think when you've the mics pulled, plugged in it kind of really focuses on just okay. the voice Thank God, because okay. they're going demented. My mom just came back from the shop and they act as if like they've been abandoned when she goes. <laughs> but I ain't talking other... of drama. Yeah, I was just about to bring it up. Go on. There's been a lot of drama in the um the music world this week. Yeah, and you know what? Whenever we fucking record this podcast, I have cursed so much in this episode. But oh, every genuinely. time we record this podcast, everything happens afterwards. We we literally have to wait a full. Everything week. happens the day before the episode comes out, so it'll okay. all happen on a Monday or Tuesday when when this week's episode's ready to go. Yeah. Oh, it'll be done by the time it comes around. I think. Um, well, it's kind of done now already, but we we can't go on without uh, commenting on it. But the we Nikki and this. Meg the Stallion beef. Ooh. It was, I don't even know where to start on it. Like, do you want to take the way? <laughs> well, yeah, because I'll, I'll say what I say. And then you, mm-hmm. you know more of like in depth. Mm-hmm. So you can like jump in at any point with like context and like mm-hmm. deeper stuff. But basically the surface level of it is, is, Megan Thee Stallion released a song, his great song. Mm. That Chris Jenner bar, I know, and she she Chris actually Morgan. shared it to her story and tagged Megan. <laughs> I know. Crazy. So Megan Thee Stallion released the song. It didn't reference Nikki, like it wasn't even confirmed to be about her. Mm. Like some people think it's about Drake. Mm. Like some well, people think the it's song a Drake is actually day. about Drake. You'd be surprised when you go into it. It actually, yeah, is about the Drake. the scars lyric because mm. apparently he's got loads of liposuction. Mm. so he's like do you know what if I had the money I'd do a two foot check (laughs) do you know what (laughs) I would do two but I think it was that he's given out about girls with BBLs and then he's you know Mm. he's walking around with the same scars so Mm. Megan released that great like it was going to number one it was doing really well oh Megan the Stallion is her body oh my god amazing like you know what she makes tall women with like like big boobs and big bums like she really like allows us to embrace ourselves like not joking because I'm quite yeah. tall as well and like she's just like oh I love her like and when you see a picture of her next to like smaller people yeah like her to be look tiny her, like, next to her <laughs> or like just like she was on SNL next to like Renee Rapp and she was in a picture with some, like this guy and like the like your eyes immediately went to Megan the presence she had like yeah I was like she looks so fucking hot like what you don't look her is she I wonder like, oh my God, she's... that's a great fucking question uh, she gives off Leo sure. vibes but she's also like Capricorn for some Megan reason Megan the stallion <laughs> let's see if I can get a chart or can I just get a sun sign just get a sun sign what, what's your intuition telling you We've got 20 minutes left, no time. I said my intuition is a Leo or a Capricorn. Mm-mm, but it makes some... Oh, she is an Aquarius sun. Okay, there we go. Leo moon. Oh, there we go. We don't have her rising, but her Mars is also in Leo. So the okay. way she takes action in this world... 
Mm. Girl, look at you getting into astrology. I know. I she, she gave me Leo vibes. Do you know what? Aquarius is fair as well. But back to the main rap theme. So okay, so yeah. I will take away on this bit because I yeah. First and foremost, and I shared it on the podcast page the last day. Also, if you're not following our Instagram girlies, please do. Um, you're missing. I have and always will be a massive Lil Kim fan, right? Now, mm-hmm. what I love about Lil Kim is she is a queen. She was the first queen. Well, in my eyes, she for me, she was my first queen of rap because she was what I grew up listening to. Okay, before mm-hmm. Nicki Minaj came along, then Nicki came along, and I find pay like pay your respects to the people who paved the way for you do you know what I mean like Lil Kim walked so you could run and I feel like Nikki came on the scene very young maybe a bit influenced from other people and she was throwing a lot of shade to Lil Kim what a lot of people don't know is Roman's Revenge is about Lil Kim right nobody Mm. knows that well no nobody seems to know it but and people think that Roman's revenge was in response to Lil Kim but in fact Lil Kim released Black Friday in response to Roman's revenge and Black Friday was like a diss back at her whole album Pink Friday and the lyrics in it Um, are insane like she literally names all of them she has a clip of one of Nicki Minaj's songs in it and then like like it's like one part it's like you see right through me and then she she cuts and she goes I draw back I'm a Brooklyn Barrow bitch rap from a Barrow bitch but anyway she is so so good and she's like either you're high or sipping that shit Wayne on I get top dollar for whatever my name on and then she always says in it like um you and she mentions Drake in it she says um I should claim all of you on my income tax because of the fact that I I made the music that now ye are able to stand and rap because of what I did so I've always respected yeah. Lil Kim's craft Nicki Minaj has always mm-hmm. been very ignorant towards Lil Kim in terms of that but I've always been a massive Lil Kim fan okay so mm-hmm. we move forward there is beef between Cardi and Nicki Minaj it's always he said she said And I feel Mm -hmm. like Nicki Minaj historically goes for low blows. She does. Like, you know what I mean? She'll never be like, she'll never be like, oh, you're this, you're that. She'll be like, oh yeah, your husband cheated on you to Cardi. And Cardi will be like, like master your craft, like mind your own business. Like if you weren't so threatened by me, you wouldn't be coming out here and saying all this. Do you know what I mean? Um, so Cardi mm-hmm. was kind of the first indicator that like she actually like after a little came to be like she does this to women in the rap industry right so yeah we move on to Megan you know there was a bit of like like discussion around the whole thing between um Nikki and Megan and the fallout and everything Nicki Minaj says it's because of the fact that Megan tried to get Nikki to drink when Nikki was trying to get pregnant with her husband and you know back, all this back and forth and then Nicki Minaj drops Chun Li right in her album yes. and says I I like basically this about Megan Thee Stallion saying I don't fuck with horses since Christopher Reeves so that was the first kind mm-hmm. of shot and you know they'd previously had Hot Girl Summer out together so when Hot Girl Summer yes. had its moment or whatever this was all like fine but I think once Megan Thee Stallion collaborated with Cardi B with WAP that's where the kind of tension happened because for Nikki it kind of came across as if she didn't want her collaborating with somebody that she also had beef with right so Uh fast forward to present day with this whole his stuff I thought when I listened to Pink Friday 2 you know there's a good few a few good songs on it but does it give the same impact that say the likes of Pink Friday the original has no it it won't and it never will be and if I'm being completely honest I think the only other album that kind of would have had similar um kind of effects to it was the album that Chun-Li was on and I don't even know the name of that album maybe it was Chun-Li I don't know but anyway so (sighs) I'm out of breath because I'm so into this so we do hit I love it I love it and Megan the Stallion, I think as a woman, has been very, very, I just think strong and a great representative for women. If, you know, you've been hard done by everybody, including Drake, who said that she mm-hmm. lied at Tory Lane shot her when he, she clearly didn't. Um, she really like kind of stands up to people. She doesn't let people bully her, which I absolutely love. So mm-hmm. in the song, there is a bar and she said, these hoes don't be mad at Megan. These hoes mad at Megan's law. Right. So that was the line that the, we were all like, oh, that is. That, that is, the is thing. so good. Yeah, the scream I scrummed when this, I I didn't know what Megan's law was. This oh, and did I you not? Oh this, no, I knew when I heard no. it. I was like, oh my god. Um, so yeah, I so didn't. I thought that. she was just. 
saying her name. No, like, no, no. And then I Googled. Yeah. Such so, a bar. What, and for, what? for people that obviously, people like, I feel like everybody knows, but Nicki Minaj is married to a registered sex offender. So he has gone mm-hmm. to jail for sexual assault. And I think it's on a minor as well. Um, so um yeah that is that is like no knowledge um and from that we just saw the absolute in my opinion like spiraling and potential downfall of Nicki Minaj because instead of you know consulting a PR team or consulting you know maybe other friends in the business she started like leaking like what she, her disc back was which was Bigfoot and maybe kind of like poking fo- fun at the fact that Megan got shot when like I think that's a bit weird because if you'd actually listen to Pink Friday 2 there's one bar that says stay, stay in your Tory lane bitch I'm not Iggy she Azalea, vouched for Tory lanes and kind of gave him a character statement to try to get his his duration like taken down so I thought no that, that was kind of a bit of amendments between Nikki and Megan when she wrapped that yeah, being like it's not me who's coming for you kind of thing no, so I thought I thought that that was the thing when she released that on Pink Friday too. But when she came out with Bigfoot saying you're gonna be on your good foot for the rest of your life, um, I was like, oh, I don't know. I just think that the rap was so bad. It sounded like she genuinely. It was so bad. It was so it bad. Was, she was as like, as Teffy said, sometimes you need to think before you respond. She said that she video said, that I shared, Teffy. Yeah, I yeah. She said she one of the lines was, "Your flow is such a bore, drinking a bottle of henny through a straw." Like, it's just not giving what you're Nicki Minaj. You're the woman who wrote Moment for Life. You were the woman who literally made all of us wrap our little asses off to Super Bass. And you're saying you've come out with a song called Bigfoot. Like, come on. You have a legacy to protect. That is not something you come back with. (laughs) The fact that her response to like the iconic bar that is Megan's Law, you know, the thought like. The family aren't happy with that, though. Meg, who Megan's law is about I, the fa- family aren't happy with that and I, I kind of do I know, see why like, that's not you okay know the way it's like Megan's law it's like saying it without saying it like that's what crafty rap is like you're you yeah. say something else double like, entendre like yeah whereas like she just was like oh you have a big foot <laughs> do yeah. you know what I mean yeah like, how do you come back like respond to Megan's law with like you have a big foot yeah like you know what I mean <laughs> I know it's, it's I just know. it's not good I'm not a rap expert but I love rap then insult. so I feel like I can really hone in when it comes to these kind of things but there's actually something else that I want to tell everybody to go watch um uh on Netflix because it actually has to do with the women who paved the way so like the likes of the like Queen Latifah's the you know all of them that yeah there's a there's a show it's called women in hip-hop on um Mm, on netflix on netflix and it does queen latifah lauren hill mc light missy elliott um and it talks Mm. about all of them basically and i think uh saweetie is in it and everything and it kind of just you know you go back through like back in the day like how they paved the ways for themselves and you know i I think it was Lauren Hill or I'm not sure who they were talking about, you know, back then, like her career was taken off and she got pregnant and they were kind of like, oh, this is the end of it, of your career. And she's like, no, it's not. So it's like, it's fantastic to see that. And I think that everyone should go watch that because, yeah. wow. But anyway, yeah, I think at the end of the day, Nicki Minaj, instead of like, when people start to, like when people are small, she has no pro- issue with them. And when they start mm-hmm. to get to like a level that she perceives herself to be at, because like, yeah. she is at a high level she when she feels threatened level. instead of being like there's enough room yeah she very much goes on the defense of like you're yeah. not taking my spot you're not taking my crown but yeah. the way she does that is like weird and I think if me. she had if she had actually shared the space with Lil Kim when she was coming up and paid her dues mm-hmm. then I think that none of this would have happened because karma comes around you know what I mean like um yeah. but you know what and both Nikki and Megan are ruled by Saturn and Saturn is the planet of karma yeah but it's like so if you're like if you're ruled by Saturn and you've been done wrong but you don't do wrong to others you'll get that karma back like Megan for example am I ruled by Saturn no you're ruled by you're a Virgo right you're ruled by um Mercury oh lovely it's Um, all your brain 
<laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, do you know what? I just think it's fantastic. But one thing I will say about Nikki and Lil Kim is they've both said in the last two years that like they both, like Nikki said that, oh, the way I should have been on the cover of Vogue, if we're being right about this, so should have Lil Kim. And Lil Kim said like, you know, um, I'm tired of this narrative, whatever. We need to stop pinning women against each other, whatever. So, but I just think Nikki's doing herself no favors. But anyway, I went on too long about that. That's my thoughts. Um, and Ooh, I just love I, that Megan hasn't clapped back. She said her thing and she was like, girl, that that disc back was boring. She said what she needed to say. She said what she, she needed said to say. She said everything she needed to say. She doesn't and, need to say anymore. And come she here to it. me. We, were you going to tell us about the whole Travis Kelsey oh, Taylor Travis, Swift? So basically, we have high school musical happening in real life. <laughs> Literally real time. the upcoming <laughs> Super Bowl era's tour of it all. Yeah. So Travis, not that I know anything about the Super Bowl or a sport. The only reason I ever entertain the idea of the Super Bowl is for the performances. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are on that vibe. But Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift's boyfriend's team, the Chiefs, the something Chiefs. I don't know. Yeah, Kansas Chiefs City, I think. Yeah, it. the Chiefs. Yeah. yeah. How did I know that? <laughs> they made it to the Super <laughs> Nif's like, I know. I do sports. They made you it do it to Taylor Swift, I do the sports. <laughs> yeah. I do Taylor, you do Travis. I think so that's right. The Chiefs, the Chiefs made it to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. but Taylor is on is restarting her world. Not restarting. She's going to the next leg of the world tour in Japan. Stunning. So she on I think it's February 11th. I'm not to 100 percent on the dates, but the day before the Super Bowl, Taylor is performing for like three days in a row in Japan. Mm. But Japan is obviously 13 hours ahead. Mm. of the United States of where the Super Bowl is going to be on mm -hmm. so she's going to have like just enough time to, to come fly back. back do you know in high school musical when they had like the timing thing and they were trying to like yeah. meet in the middle yeah so she has just enough time to fly back and um support Travis at the Super Bowl which is really oh, cute but also if they so would... many of the numbers add up to 13 mm. like yeah what's the Japan number thing to Vegas yeah so Japan to Vegas is a 13 hour flight right yeah um, third Japan is also thirteen hours ahead. Like, okay. Of so, there's so many. Well, yeah, it would be because there's some... thirteen hour flight difference. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's like the dates of it all adds up to thirteen. Like the date that the Super Bowl is <laughs> on, like um eleven two. Yeah. Is thirteen. Yeah. It's so weird. Cause, like Taylor's number is thirteen, and like so so many things that relate to Taylor and Travis. Like nothing is like, like do you ever see that meme nothing and it's is like the guy on the board with the mats? Is... Do you ever see yeah. the thing of the guy on the board with the mats and he's like this, like it all connects together? I feel like anytime a Swifty says something, that's what I hear. <laughs> Everything's always connected, but not even in Taylor Swift's world, like in the world, like these like little things that's and also like one of Taylor's songs, You Belong With Me. Mm. is like about like her watching a guy at a football game the song mean like she references the guy at the football game so often because when she was younger she always felt like she couldn't date the popular guy at the football game like and now she's like dating the guy at the football game while he's in his prime while she's in her prime oh my god we just love to see it she's i can see them I having a baby in the next year yeah she's mm, always been nice. such like a, she has always been so like out there with like mm. being loved out loud like did you see the clip of maybe you didn't because your timeline I imagine looks very different to mine right now but she Fact. <laughs> there was a clip of her saying like in an interview that like you know she just has to become comfortable with like she will never be peaceful for a mm. guy to be with like you know mm. being in love with her will always be like a hard kind of thing because of the attention she brings oh yeah and then it was the clip reflected on her going onto the pitch after Travis's team made the Super Bowl. And like, it was like, there was so much chaos around them, but like, you know, he was it paying was her so much. He wasn't like, the 50s that. Yeah, it was very cinematic. And, and he wasn't like looking at her being like, you're not my peace. Do you know that kind of, like they yeah. found peace in the chaos that surrounds them, which metaphorically is just, it's a love story, baby. Just say yes. You know what I mean? Just say yes, baby. Just say yes. We sang Love Story the other night. Actually, it was so much fun at like 4 a.m. on my first night in Rome. So You what? What a, what a time. Like we, when we came back here, we were doing like the music situation. Mm -hmm. And of course, Taylor Swift was played Love Story. And like, it's such a good, like anyone who even says like, oh yeah, Taylor Swift, 
love story comes on you're love story is a bop yeah (laughs) i will give you that it is very good (laughs) i actually saw mariah carey's daughter singing and i was like oh my god she is the next i need to send you the video oh my god like she's obviously the best teacher in mariah carey but oh the vocals on her if she sounds like that at her age what is she like 11 like she sounds like ariana grande but better like she sounds like if you put mariah carey in with like Beyonce she is literally phenomenal like she is so the control in her voice at 11 I'm like what the hell or she's like 13 I don't know anyway she's too young to be able to sing like that good she's like the next big thing I think yeah she's you know what I feel like being Mariah Carey's daughter it was either gonna go one way or another you were either (laughs) gonna like not have a note in your head and it was gonna be like this is so funny or like mini Mariah I know how great though um but yeah right the girlies i think that's it timing is running up so yeah i feel like today we talked music pop culture i'm about to go explore rome rebecca's gonna go on a date um for the plot for the podcast for next week guys so she'll be reporting back to us with the updates oh will i oh yeah, yeah well, i i have until like next friday to go on a date uh yeah until next friday Ish. yeah so you've loads of time Ish. really to do it okay, okay. Bye, guys. Love you so much. See you later. Bye, guys.